There are many places on planet 4546b one shouldn't visit haphazardly. Caverns of poisonous brine, dunes of deadly leviathans, or vistas of boiling lava. Yet few among them could hope to reach the crater edge. A massive area that surrounds the entire playable zone of Subnautica with vertigo-inducing chasms falling into dark depths about which we know some things, but certainly not all. Hello my friends, this is The Void, and I'll be telling you some of its more obscure secrets you might not have known before today. So strap in, get a big oxygen tank, and let's dive into the world of your worst nightmares. So let's begin with a quick overview of the conventional lore to get us started. The game of Subnautica takes place on a crater of a massive dormant volcano that, according to the PDA, hasn't been active in millennia yet protrudes far out from the deep ocean floor, reaching all the way to the surface in some places. Yet of course, the crater has to have an edge, and where it ends, the dead zone begins. Now that name isn't entirely accurate, since the PDA identifies that both microscopic and leviathan-sized organisms likely inhabit it, but compared to the crater itself, the biodiversity here is very low. Now, in both lore and gameplay terms, the void isn't infinite. In terms of lore, we know there are other land masses on the planet, including Sector Zero, where Below Zero takes place. And in terms of gameplay, getting 8,192 meters away from the center of the map in any direction will teleport a player to the playable area again. However, something I discovered while building a base to the very edge of the void is that the kilometers separating the crater from endless ocean aren't uniform. In fact, there are multiple zones in the void where the game gets very confused about where exactly the player is and will suddenly state that they are in biomes that are by this point thousands of meters away. Interestingly enough, this doesn't just happen in the first Subnautica. I was able to reproduce this behavior in Below Zero as well. Now, a popular theory in the comments was that for some reason, the game's biome map repeats itself out in the void, which is why the print biome command returns these strange results. It's also worth noting that at some point, this stops happening, and the game enters what you can call true void, where even the ghost leviathans or chalicerates won't spawn anymore. What I found curious is that whereas in the first game, once this happens, the game never reverts back from it. But in Below Zero, this happens very close to the crater, and the game cycles through seemingly random biomes a few times before reaching the 8,000 meter mark. And let's stick with Below Zero for a bit, because there are many other weird things about the void here. For one, the biome begins way earlier than in the first game, meaning you can easily get into situations where you just swim a bit closer to where the terrain kind of starts to drop off, only to have a void glycer to give you a good full body massage with its mandibles. This earlier start also means that some large resource deposits can be found in the void, which is way different from the first game, where the area is completely barren. Additionally, there is way more terrain in the void of Sector Zero, consisting of smaller or larger rectangular platforms that protrude away from the map in seemingly random directions, as well as a full-blown bottom at around the 3000 meter mark. Yeah, as opposed to the first game, which did initially have a bottom to the void but lost it in an update later, Below Zero kept the bottom all the way past 2.0, and you can still visit it yourself. It stretches out ways outside of the map, and then sharply drops off, signaling the true end of all geometry in the world. What I'd say is even more curious, though, is that in Below Zero, there aren't just two types of void, there are actually three. The elusive Tundra Void, as it's known, might be a bit less visited, but exists in the game nonetheless. And what makes it so interesting is that a sizable portion of it isn't underwater. You can enter this biome in several places by bugging your way out of the playable area towards the back of the map, which still has a ton of terrain. You'll enter an area composed of many rolling hills and flat plains of snow that will print as Tundra Void when the print biome command is used. Now, there is quite a bit to explore back here, with strange areas that look like they might have been used for testing during early development stages, but what I found interesting is that the biome doesn't end after you fall into the water on the other side. It actually stretches quite far out before turning either into the regular void or disappearing into true void, 
let's say, altogether. And speaking of the Age of the Void, something most newer players won't know about is the existence of Farlands, or at least during the early access build. Now, I've explored these in a separate video, but in both games, areas of strange and rather intense geometry used to exist outside of the edges of the map that were presumably supposed to stop players from leaving the crater in the first game, and look, I'm not really sure what the purpose of this one was, but let's be honest, it's certainly interesting. If you're wondering, yes, it was also possible to glitch your way past these, but nothing really interesting would happen. And also, yes, it is possible to glitch your way past the teleport barrier on the modern day void, but again, nothing of note should be there. Though, who knows? A popular theory that's also now on the wiki is that the void might have, or might be, home to an adult version of the gargantuan leviathan, so <laughs> who knows? Maybe none of us have simply explored far enough. But that brings us to the end of the video, so I really hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you learned some new things about the very interesting area that is the Void. If you already knew everything, congratulations, you are a true expert on Subnautica lore, but if you still enjoyed, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing, all of those would be very much appreciated. With that, I want to wish you guys a beautiful rest of today, and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye-bye.